So what is the best blueberry strain? Blueberry cupcake? Blueberry pancakes? Or blueberry muffin? How do they grow? How do they compare in the lab? How about the extraction? Terps and effects? And most importantly, who's the baddest of the blues? Welcome to the Battle of the Blueberries. First time here? Welcome to Homegrow TV, the internet's highest quality grow show. If you're like us and love seed to harvest videos, subscribe now because we got a ton on the way. Out of every 1,000 of you that watch, only 29 subscribe. So help a brother out, click that little subscribe button and the bell notification, cause you know, <laughs> YouTube. Maybe we could be friends more. I got a job, but I'd be free on the weekends for sure. I ain't shallow, rather hop in your deep and me and more. She is short, shout out to the thing, laying on. Uh. Now, don't go being silly and thinking that this video is something that it ain't. This is strictly an educational documentary backed by science and research. I do not in any way promote the use of legal or illegal psychoactive substances. So please be responsible and thank you. Uh, plus you got enough soul, I speak in my tongue goes a mile a minute and mind your eye didn't we already cross paths before now you grin and I don't even need a big ass smile. Now that we got that out of the way. Well, there's no problem. If you had a gun, shoot him in the head. Welcome to another Seed to Harvest episode. Not just any Seed to Harvest. For the first time, we're reviewing two strains in a head-to-head -head battle in the same episode. Something this channel has never done before in the genetics, LED, and data department. An episode documented like no other. More shots, more science, more data, more phenos, and way more flowers than ever before. We're gonna review both the new blueberry strains created by one of USA's most reputable breeders. Humboldt. 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 Humboldt Seed Company. Humboldt Seed Company. Humboldt Seed Company. I'm from Humboldt Seed Company. We'll grow them from seed to harvest, discuss their flavors, aromas, and growth patterns to finally crown the ultimate blueberry champion. Let's go. She's so bad, she never met Santa. She bad. Yeah, I don't even care, I never had manners. Giving you a chance to see the overall returns and what cannabinoid and terpenes they are both capable of. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to the Blueberry Cupcake and Blueberry Pancakes by the Humboldt Seed Company. What's up? What's up? Ready, that's me, that's up. That's up. I've been working on getting that buzz and finally refill my cup. Okay. I don't even have shit to prove. I did all the things I said I'd do. It's way too fun with the haters moving and now I wanna make it just because I choose. This is the fourth episode in the Humboldt Seed Company saga and how we got here is a really interesting story we'll be diving deeper into in just a sec. Because this specific seed to harvest has so much information to go over, it'll be broken down into a three-part series. This is part one where I'll break down the cultivar history, breeder info, and full veg cycle. Part two will take us through the entire flower phase right up to harvest. And part three will break down the post-harvest results, such as lab analysis, rosin results, taste and effect, ultimately crowning the winner of this battle of the blueberries. Something else new this week is the LED and grow monitor we are using. For the first time ever, we're gonna be using the brand new AC Infinity Ion Frame Evo 6, which is a 500 watt LED grow light. We'll be including the LED distance, PPFD readings, and for the first time ever, 24 seven historical data from inside the tent, thanks to the new Pulse Pro. Obviously, peep in the final flower results so you can see how well this new EvoTech really performs. And by the end of this episode, you will know what these genetics are all about and if this LED and tent setup is right for you. Buckle up, grab your munchies, and get ready because this episode is officially starting. Pulled out of the driveway onto the highway. Didn't make reservations at the time place. Ended up a TGI Friday. As always, to start off this seed to harvest, let's first talk about the genetics, 
the breeders who created it, and how it ended up on the channel. I heard that you took a road trip from Philly, ended up in Humboldt, and then never went back. I definitely made a good choice, I think. We've covered this in past episodes, such as the Potty Mouth, Hella Jelly, and of course, the Blueberry Muffin. So much has happened since then. New flavors, new achievements, new collabs. But their history goes a little something like this. We just did this first ever thing. Yeah, um, first ever thing. We extracted turpins from our- Founded in the fertile grounds of Humboldt County, California in 2001. The Humboldt Seed Company has been a beacon of innovation and quality in the cannabis world. With a team of dedicated biologists and breeders, they've pioneered specialized cannabis breeding and strain development. To me, pheno hunting is to Humboldt Seed Co. as strain hunting is to greenhouse seeds. They literally put pheno hunting on the map for me. He's always talking about that pheno hunting because it's really important. As you can see, we've been pheno hunting for quite some time now. <laughs> we become hoarders of, of cannabis genetics. Yeah. In 2018, they hosted the world's largest pheno hunt through a collaborative genetic clone pursuit. Teaming with local farm friends, they chose the top percentile clones. They've refined the genetics from this effort and have created new original strains, giving them a unique variety of coveted flavors. Known for their distinctive aromas and flavors, the Humboldt Seed Company has been featured as Strain of the Year by Leafly, graced the covers of High Times and Skunk Magazine, and won multiple major cannabis cups in the US. Whether it's the unique stank in strains like Vanilla Frosting, Raspberry Parfait, Magic Melon, or cult favorites like Blueberry Muffin. They've been making waves for over two decades, 22 years to be exact. We had a vision and we carried this idea and we you know, carried this dream throughout you know, over 20 years of having to hide what we were doing and you know, having Gorilla Grows chopped down and being like, all right, we're gonna have a small Christmas this year, sweetie. <laughs> like, Moved on, turning the page. New spot, she's burning the sage. If he knocks, she'll turn him away. Say and now, they've brought us two new ridiculous strains. Blueberry Cupcake and Blueberry Pancakes. After meeting Ben and part of the Humble team at the Cannabis Cup last year here in Colombia, I took home and ran out three strains. Hella Jelly, which broke tasty candy-like extraction records on the channel. Potty Mouth, which got me first place at one of my favorite cannabis cups here in Medellin, Colombia. And the Blueberry Muffin, which had terps that were legit so true to its name that I finally understand what they meant by specialized cannabis breeding and strain development. It was immediately added to my top 10 favorite strains of all time. Actually, two of the three strains made it to my top 10 list so it's fair to say I became an instant Humboldt Seed Co. fanboy after my first run. I don't know about you, but a lot of the strains I grow come from a recommendation from a friend, a sample I tried, or a solid seed to harvest I watched online. So how did the blueberry cupcake and pancakes make it to the channel? The cool part is, you guys. How massive the blueberry cupcake is. On the top 10 strain video, I left a link where you could drop your recommendations. And let's just say it was loud and clear. Blueberry cupcake, blueberry muffin crossed with wedding cake. I've grown the blueberry cupcake and it's really my favorite strain as of right now. It's so delicious, pungent, blueberry and gas. Blueberry, 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 blueberry. Blue. Okay, and a lot of jelly donuts, which I may or may not be testing right now, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. By the time I got to finalizing my new must-try list of genetics, Spanibus 2023 rolled around, and the Humboldt Seed Co. announced one of its new drops, the Blueberry Pancakes. Oh my I had to have it. The vision was clear. An ultimate showdown of the blueberries and deep dive into what was coined as the blueberry verse. But how was I gonna get them from the Spanibus drop if neither myself nor my Grobro Mr. Q was there like he was last year? So that's when this guy enters the picture. The grow bro from Barranquilla, Colombia. Jamil from Back Growing. You might recognize him as the guy who hooked us up with the hunted King's Juice Cut. And he was our intro to the strain hunters. Or maybe you recognize him from a few of the Cannabis Cup episodes as the guy taking back cups to the coast of Colombia. Dude's not only a legend, but once again, a key character in today's story. 
our boy Back was throwing up stories on his IG of his adventures at Spanibus. Problem was, it was the last day. So, like a crazy stalker would do, I messaged him, called him, and dropped voice messages until I got an answer. Hey, bro, dude. How you doing? Bro, I know it's the last day, but could you please, please, please make it to the Humboldt Seaco booth and grab me just two things pancakes and cupcake? Okay, bro, don't worry. I got your bag. Actually, look, I'm just leaving my Airbnb, heading to Spanibus. So, in an hour, I'll, I'll guide your seat. It was bro. on lock. The dude pulled through and somehow even got himself behind the booth and mic'd up for a video. Things are going wild here, bro. Like I said, legend. Anyway, 48 hours later, and I had a five pack of the pancakes and a couple three seed packs of the cupcake in my hands ready to germinate. But before we pop, let's talk about the parent genetics and strain history. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. There's still two more episodes to come and I don't want you to miss any of it. Let's start with the blueberry cupcake, made by crossing blueberry muffin to wedding cake, and originally bred and discovered by the team at Hendrix Farm, and featured on the Grow Off in 2020. Known those guys for you know years and years. It's like they had you know a clone that they really liked, and we brought it in, and we thought it would be a really cool addition to the blueberry muffin, so we crossed it into the blueberry muffin. Just kind of just wrenched up the THC production on the muffin. Humboldt Seed Co. simply made this available in seed form. And through the grow off, this genetic was trialed in different growing conditions and got a great response from its competitors. As an S1, selfed one time, there is some variation. But apparently, the popular blueberry muffin terpenes tend to be dominant thanks to the stable homozygous nature of the blueberry muffin IBL, while the high THC of the cake gives an extra punch. They say the flower smells wonderful, with all the subtleties of cake batter and blueberries with a hint of rocket fuel. Blueberry notes to it, but it's like a blueberry gas, like, a blue, like almost like a blueberry metal kind of gas nose to it now. I wanted to know more about the histories of the parent genetics, so I opened up my higher book to page 292, Wedding Cake. Bred by Sea Junkie Genetics, this cross of triangle kush and animal mints apparently produces a vanilla sweet, earthy, creamy aroma. Quoted by the author Dan Michaels, a wedding cake represents hope and union, symbolizing the beginning of a tandem journey through the trials and tribulations of life. Inspired by this symbol, Sea Junkie Genetics rose to the occasion with a union of two beloved parents, also referred to as Triangle Mints Number 23 and Pink Cookies, as the Canucks like to call them. This indica heavy hitter delivers extreme relaxation of the mind, body, and soul that's perfect when one needs a rest. Looking at the pictures from Eric Nugshots of one of the phenos grown out by the Jungle Boys, and I can see the resemblance. Flip to page 204, Blueberry Muffin. Bred by Humboldt Seed Company, this cross of Razzleberry and Purple Panty Dropper is known to have an energetic, upbeat, cheerful effect with blueberry sweet, creamy aromas. As quoted in the book, this tasty treat was born out of labor of love. After an intense and calculated 22-year breeding process, a phenotype finally emerged featuring strikingly uniform colas tinted with enticing purple flakes and frosted with a glistening coat of trichomes. If looks weren't enough to make your mouth water, the powerful aroma that wafts from these buds smells exactly like a heavenly baked tray of fresh blueberry muffins. We're proud that we can share seeds with the world. Every single one that you grow smells like a blueberry muffin. And peeking at this picture from Eric Nugshots of a pheno grown out by Northwest Soil Tech in Oregon, I can see a lot of similarities to what I grew out and a few of the grow bros from the Discord community. So the blueberry cupcake that was born from the combination of these two iconic strains, wedding cake and blueberry muffin, has a 60 day predicted flower time, THC levels of 28 to 34% and an explosive growth style. I'm really excited to see what our lab results bring back in comparison. My ultimate goal for the strain was to hopefully find something as sexy as Empire Exotics underscore NYC on Instagram, and ultimately a frostier, gassier version of the blueberry muffin I've ran in the past. 
Now, moving on to the newer of the strains that we're testing today, blueberry pancakes. The Blueberry Pancakes is a product of a collaborative pheno hunt at Wave Rider Nursery. After three generations of carefully selecting and backcrossing, they finally released the Blueberry Pancakes. Drew, the owner of Wave Rider, and I really, we kind of narrowed it down to two different phenotypes that we really liked. And um, then we grew them at scale. Apparently this plant stacks heavy, vibrant, bright green, trichome covered nugs with a sickeningly sweet syrup nose making this purple flake mama an epic addition to their legendary blueberry line. This one that was just had all that sickeningly sweet blueberry aroma to it. That was just kind of what I had set out for. It was made by crossing the slur cane to the purple panty dropper and is a sativa leaning hybrid. It has the same predicted flower time as blueberry cupcakes of 60 days and is easily identified by its exotic purple accents and unique smell. Iridescent, violet, purple. Just like wedding cake, Slurricane is another big name strain that I've had little experience with. I mean, I've seen it grown out once a long time ago by the Grow Bro Mr. Q. This one is the Slurricane. Sadly, because of uh, some, uh, some bad weather, I lost here this part of the plant. But that was a long time ago, and I never got to try the flowers. So back to the higher book for more investigation. Page 276, Slurricane. Breeder, in-house genetics, and made by crossing Dosi Dose to Purple Punch. The sensory is supposed to be grape, berries, sweet, spicy, earthy, and effects relaxed, happy, and sedated. And I remember Ben talking terps on the podcast. The Slurricane does have a slight little blueberry nose to it, so I thought it would be a really good pairing if I could get all that sweet blueberry. The picture of the Slurricane Fino grown by Shangri-La Farms had a freakish resemblance to the pancakes on the Humboldt's website. This book is sick, but unfortunately had nothing about the other parent, the Purple Panty Dropper. But I know that it's a parent of the Blueberry Muffin, and a big reason we get such a unique, diverse blueberry terp profile. Really dumps the terps as well. So not much to say about the PPD, other than it's known to produce ridiculously tasting unique cultivars. My ultimate goal with the blueberry pancakes is to hopefully find something that has exaggerated loud blueberry levels, but nothing else. No gas, no muffin, nothing but sweet, ripest of the ripe blueberry aromas. Hopefully all this gives you a better idea of the strains that we're dealing with here and a little context of the differences that we're gonna be seeing later in this battle. I threw down a message into the Homegrow TV Discord asking the community who's run any of the blueberries. What's up Homegrow TV, man? I got that blueberry cupcake, that blueberry pancake, man. You got me motivated to try these humble genetics, man. I think there's fire in here. It's just a matter of time before I find it. Grow with Joe has a seed to harvest coming soon. Papa Nugs threw down a solid grow diary. Harry Nugs slapped up two killer muffin finos. Ken Pot Chi working with a mean cupcake fino. And High Maintenance also crushed a cupcake. Dudes like Shadowborn Genetics and Wallapini Seeds not only hunted, but also bred with their winter muffins. And Grow Bro Crop Chop and Grow has a wicked cupcake seed to harvest video on YouTube. So the blueberry cupcake can either be directly in the middle or to the right. Well, it was finally time to try some of the Humboldt Seed Company's blueberry cupcake. And I'm not sure if he's even in the Discord community yet but he should be. Couldn't be happier with the results. Let's smoke some of the Humboldt Seed Company blueberry cupcake. Oh wait, he literally just joined as I was finishing this edit. What up, Crop Chop and Grow? See you in the Discord. It's about to be popping with a bunch of stuff like exclusive giveaways and certain discount codes. More importantly, it's becoming the place where we can all actually communicate and coordinate. Start growing together, sharing results, and ultimately giving me a platform to share more of you from the community and your results. But yeah, I'll leave the link down in the description below for those of you who still aren't a part of the Discord yet. We got a lot of work ahead of us. So let's jump into the veg phase. It all began on the beautiful day of March 15th, 2023 here at my finca in Antioquia, Colombia, just outside of Medellin. Spanibus had just come to an end three days earlier, and I officially had the packs in hand and ready to pop. 
I decided to pop one of the three seed packs of the blueberry cupcake first. And as always, I used the cotton pad method to germinate. Gonna get lucky Friday, cause Stephanie said come over. How could I deny her fly face? Don't need no luck from Clover. She gon' eat me up like live bait. Turned out she knew I knew this dude she like. She like shit I wait. Just a few sprays into a Ziploc bag with a small opening. Next, I cracked the pack of the blueberry pancakes. This was a five seed pack, so I popped the first three that came out, hoping that my winner would be in one of these three. They tell me there's a million fish in the sea. I'm like, okay, but I don't need bottom feeders. I want one so we can breathe. Jeez. But in the back of my mind, I still had curiosity about the other two pancake seeds remaining and the other three pack of cupcakes. Should I pop them all? Sticking to three for now. Both labeled Ziplocs into this little black case that I recently started using. I like to use this or a good cardboard box. And I've been putting it right into the veg tent for a little extra heat. Also, something to note is that I now stand the box upright. This is to prevent the taproot from growing down into the cotton pad, which has happened a few times in the past. And this is legit something that I learned from you guys in the comments. So yeah, I really do appreciate all the feedback you guys drop on these uploads. Anyway, back to the story. Under 72 hours later, and holy moly, the three blueberry cupcake seeds gone and shot out big time. One of them has completely shed its casing, has both cotyledon leaves out, and is looking like she's full on ready to set up shop and live the rest of her life in this cotton pad. <laughs> Wild. As always, I gently planted each into their own little seedling pot and pre-amended 70-30 cocoa casting mix. Gave them a gentle but copious amount of sprays because the medium was definitely a bit dried out. Next up are three blueberry pancakes. Two exploded and one popped. The size difference on these is usually just a matter of hours apart and not necessarily an important note to make. But I do in generally plant the biggest seed labeled number one and then go down the list to the smallest sprout being the last number. Kinda in a way take note without really taking note if you know what I mean. Obviously later in the hunt we'll be taking full note of the growth structure and such, but anyway. A good spray and into the AC Infinity 2-in-1 veg tent they went. Just a day later, they were shooting out and starting their journey in what I officially called Day 1 Veg. Wait, what's this? More blueberry pancakes? Yeah, I had to. I couldn't live with myself imagining what I was potentially missing out on. Leaving two pancakes behind in the pack just didn't feel right. Plus, our little number three never really made the cut. So meet the new blueberry pancakes three and four. Nothing much to do other than bottom feed them in the clone tray every few days and let them do their thing. Here we are on day 14, end of week two veg. Starting with the three blueberry cupcakes, we can see an even uniformity so far with no major differences other than number two being a touch taller. Moving on to the blueberry pancakes and you can see three and four are a bit smaller and are two days behind. Things were looking good and off to a good start for both the blueberry strains so far. Three days later on day 17 veg and it was transplant day. In general, the roots were looking good and the only thing to point out was the slight deficiency cupcake number one had on its seed leaf. Looked like a magnesium calcium deficiency and potentially a sign that this will feed a little heavier than the other phenos. This is something I never worry about, especially on transplant day. A good transplant always fixes them up and resets them for me. A major reason is because of Mr. Q's pre-amendments that I throw in my mix. It's called Power Mix and I also use as Mycor. 
This is what charges my soil with calcium, magnesium, silica, organic carbon, and tons of microorganisms. Although it's a key piece of my arsenal, this is something I can't really recommend to anyone because it's only available here in Colombia. I'll be plugging the stash blend into my next few runs to see if it can be my solid recommendation for those in the US. It's packed with everything I love from Mr. Q's Power Mix and Mycor. Plus, it's got some cool ingredients that I've never tested before. It literally just showed up as I was finishing this video, so stay tuned for future episodes and feedback. Anyway, after everything was transplanted, we brought them into the studio for a quick comparison. Something important to note is you can see that we never watered after transplant. This is something you should never do. Always water immediately after transplant. Eighteen days later, on day 35, end of week 5 veg, all the blueberries have responded splendidly to their new transplants. This time, starting with the blueberry pancakes, Vino 1 and 2 are similar and a little bit taller. And 3 and 4 are somewhat shorter, with 4 showing this strange bushy structure. With her side branches competing with and ultimately beating the main cola. Something is up, but we'll look into that in a sec. Let's check out the blueberry cupcake Vinos. Cupcakes were a little more level across the board. But number two was showing the same strange side branching overgrowth as pancakes number four. Something was definitely fishy about this situation. Has something been munching on these leaves? Did that have something to do with the growth structure of the pancakes number four and cupcake number two? We were both to find out, because it was time to top, train, and clean up all the blueberries. Step one was topping. This topping refers to the process of trimming the uppermost growth of the plant to promote fuller, bushier growth and is definitely considered a high stress training technique. I knew I was planning to veg a little longer than usual, so this was perfect time. Step two was removing any of the main stem fan leaves or anything directly blocking bud sites. These are some huge and healthy fan leaves. And I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but pancakes number two had an extra layer of leaflets emerging from some of its main fan leaves. I haven't been able to find a definitive answer online, but let me know in the comments if you know what this is. I've heard it's a response to light stress, I've heard it's a genetic mutation, no idea, but it's pretty cool. This is also when I remove all the bottom growth that isn't going to reach the top and turn anything big enough into clones. Step 3. Tie down branches to the AC Infinity fabric pots using plant twist tie. This is a form of low stress training, and the goal here is to bush out and even out the canopy. During cleanup and training of the pancakes number four is when I found the issue. There was a legit clean cut tunnel right through the main stem. I'm so I took a clean cut on the node below. I have no idea what did this, but looking back at the leaves from cupcake number two, I think I had an idea. Sure enough, that's where we found the culprit. A fat, juicy, can of munching caterpillar. I try not to mention my debt, or relentless obsession with death. That sex is the only connection I get, or that sometimes I'll make a bit less than the rent. I knew they ate leaves, but I had no idea that they eat through stems. Actually, I've seen on Instagram, this guy, Derek Power Peewee, had one go into his stem and start cocooning or whatever. Didn't make reservations at the Thai place, send it up a TGI Friday. Greasy move on the caterpillar's part, if you ask me. But how can you hate on a bug with such killer taste? 
taste in flowers. So yes, he did survive, and luckily so did the phenos affected. So now the strange growth we were seeing on pancakes number four and cupcake two totally made sense. All the growth had been diverted to the lower side branches. Anyway, this is what everything looked like after we got them chained up. Back into their AC Infinity 4x4 they went, under the ion board S44 400 watt LED. I had the light set to 100% and about 3 to 4 feet away, but get ready for change because all this was going to be swapped out very soon. Welcome to day 50, the start of week 8 veg. It was absolutely packed in here. Lush, green, and healthy as fuck. Everything was competing for light. The three cupcakes were here on the right, and the four pancakes on the left. Part of me wanted to kick the flower right in this moment, but there was two major changes to make first. Warning. I'm about to install two new pieces of gear that I'm genuinely really excited about. If you're just here for the blueberries or the type of guy that doesn't give a f about gear, then skip to the next chapter. But if you're like me and want to see the newest tech advancements in the home growth space, then stick around because you're really going to like this. First was this little device right here. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to the Pulse Pro. And no one cares about what you about to do, but ain't done yet. Ain't nobody really be paying attention, they just say shit's fresh. You the type to come to a conclusion, read it just a headline, ain't you? A few months ago, I was watching a live on the High Again YouTube channel, and they did something that blew my mind. I think one of the key things that um, the Pulse really shines through that you know nothing else really has in the segment is they have the PAR meter built in. It's affordable, so you can take your PAR measurement. Like We get so many questions about light height. The dots clicked, and I realized that not only was there a few metrics I wasn't tracking my garden, like CO2, light sensor, and DLI meter, but it was all presented in an extremely easy to understand dashboard that was saved and shareable. And it monitors over the day live. Allowing me to easily track my data from seed to harvest and dive deeper into my metrics if an issue ever arose in my garden. I'll be diving a lot deeper into Pulse Grow and their tools in the future uploads. The cool news is that every seed to harvest from here on out will have a link down below the description showing you the conditions, light schedule, and averages over the entire seed to harvest process. So if you wanted to know what the RH was throughout the grow, you can do that now. The max, the minimum, the average, the variable, the day and night averages, and you can do that for every useful metric in the garden. The Pulse Pro was a breeze to install and link up. I set the alarm triggers, the light schedule, and we were off to the races. There was still another major garden update to install. The first thing I wanted to do with the Pulse Pro was run a PAR and Spectrum test on the AC Infinity Ion Board S44. That's the other cool thing about this tool. I can easily take snapshots and save the data so I know the metrics for my LEDs PAR at different distances. The S44 at a foot and a half away, right in the middle, and at 100%, registered at 994 ppfd, and this spectrum chart. Saved, and we'll look at this again in a sec. It's time to set up the brand spanking new AC Infinity LED. I introduce you to the Ion Frame Evo 6. This 500 watt bar style LED was designed to fit in a 3x3 space, but it can easily flower out a 4x4 tent like I have it going into right now. That's thanks to the over spec power that they packed into this design. It's also worth mentioning that this is now the most efficient LED that I own, thanks to the new Evo diodes that have an efficacy of 3.14 micromoles per joule. And look, I'm no expert, but I feel like the coverage with this bar style LED is going to be so much better than the ion board design. I've already achieved some ridiculous results with the S44, so I can't even imagine what's coming from this run with the new ion frame installed. I took a quick par and spectrum snapshot on the Pulse Pro to compare it to the S44. 
I'll throw them both up on the screen. The Evo had a slight jump in par, new spectrum and reading on the ultraviolet UV side we didn't get on the ion board. I whipped out the Apogee par meter to double check the pulse, and it was bang on. The biggest differences on par readings on the new Ion Frame Evo versus the old Ion Board LED was the readings on the edges. The spread is way more even on the Ion Frame Bar Style LED. For a deep dive, check out the video from LED Grow Lights Depot. They have a great detailed breakdown. But the fact that I could get this accurate reading from the pulse was kind of shocking. The Apogee Instruments MQ500 was previously the only thing I had to recommend to growers who would ask me how I check my par. But at just over $500, the price was always a little steep for new growers. Now, for a bit less than that, I have a tool that reads PAR, plus tracks every essential environment condition I would need to know, and let me know about it on the go. As always, I have my affiliate links and discount codes for everything I use down in the description below. Every time those get used, we make a small affiliate commission, and that helps drive the channel more than you know. So thank you to everyone who's been using those. Anyway, enough gear talk, back to the story. While all the blueberries were out of the tent, we took time to clean up the bottom growth and prep them for the transition of flower. It was time to change the timer to 12-12 using the AC Infinity app, marking day 50 as the last day of edge. That concludes this part one of the Battle of the Blueberries. Blueberry Cupcake versus Blueberry Pancakes. In the next episode, we jump right into flower and cruise all the way to harvest. Throw down in the comments your thoughts so far and predicted winner if you got one. Don't forget to subscribe, much love, and see you next time on Homegrow TV.